Here is one of the best resources I have found for finding comic books by cover artist. Hey there, today I have a resource video, and in this video I'm going to show you the resource that I use for finding comic books by cover artist, and I think there's a number of ways to do this, but for me, most of those involve searching on platforms where I'm going to be purchasing comic books, uh, online stores. Uh, and so a lot of them have like a search, but I, I don't wanna have to deal with their search interface. And I found a great resource that I want to share with you. And it involves the Grand Comic Database. You can find them on comics.org. And there's a number of different ways to, to search for comics on that site, but it is the largest comic books uh, database. And it's all online, it's free. It's a great resource if you're looking for comic books and you're searching for metadata uh, related to comic books. And I'm gonna share my screen here momentarily and show you how I use the Grand Comics database to specifically find books by cover artists. Now, the scenario that I have uh, is CGC has these uh, signing programs, their, their signature series programs where you can submit comics for grading and for signing and have specific creators or celebrities sign these comic books. And a lot of times people scramble kind of at the last minute, I, I know I do, to find books that would be worthwhile to send in, but it's not always clear how to specifically find them. Maybe you're searching that online store by the creator's name and hoping that search results come back. But one of the, I think, uh, creative and clever ways to leverage a signature series program submission is to find books that were done by that creator, specifically a cover artist. And maybe it's a book that's just cover price or it's a dollar bin book or something that just people aren't really interested in and you can breathe new life and new value into those books. Uh, for example, here we have the blog post from July 7th, 2023 about uh, Jenny Frizen, one of uh, the best artists working today, best cover artists, uh, one of my favorite artists. And this was announced on July 7th that she's doing a signature series with CGC. Uh, I won't go into too many of the details. You can read about it on the CGC website. Uh, but we've got a, a due date of sometime in September. It looks like Friday, September 15th. There's the cost and all of that. Now, what ends up happening is, uh, for me, I end up kind of scrambling last minute to either figure out, am I going to participate? Which books am I going to send in? But also what ends up happening is a lot of the books will spike in value because people are trying to buy some of those comics where Frizen has done the cover at the last minute. And with Frizen being as popular as she is, using her as an example, there's plenty of books that probably come to mind. Something is Killing the Children, there's Catwoman covers, Wonder Woman covers, and so forth. But uh, a lot of times you can breathe new life into some, uh, some older books that she's done that you can find at cover price or for a lot less than some of her popular books because everyone is sort of flocking to those more well-known covers that she has done. So this is where I'll show you how I use the Grand Comics database. Uh, this is uh, available for everyone for free at comics.org. You do not need to register. It's just an open uh, queryable comic book database that gets regularly updated. Um, I love it, but it is not easy to use. So I'm going to show you kind of the, the very quick and easy way to find information about comic book cover artists. And the first thing you wanna take note of is at the top, um, we're gonna search for comics by Jenny Frizen, but in, before I type in her name, you're gonna switch the search dropdown to creator name, and then you can type in her name, Jenny Frizen, and run the search. And with her name being unique in the industry, there is her uh, creator details, and you can see 444 issues linked, but that's covering where anytime she's credited. So we're gonna click on the creator name and what we want is just the covers. Now what the Grand Comics database or GCD has done is created already a report, if you will, called cover list uh, via linked credit records. And you can see where you could run other reports where she's credited within a series or maybe 
the creation of a character so you can check these out but i use this one cover list and that's basically it you get right to a paginated list of comic books that uh, she has done the cover for um, i do one other filter here just because i'm personally interested in us only published books in english and so what i'll do here is switch the country to united states language to English, but if you're looking for maybe Frizen covers on non-US editions, you could also use this to, to filter. I, you think you get the idea. Uh, also, if you're looking for a particular publisher, like I just want to see her Marvel covers or her DC covers, but I just want to see all of her covers here, and I'll click filter results. So this takes the, the pre-existing cover report and further filters it down to U.S. published books that are in English. It is sorted by default by publication date. Not every book in the Grand Comics database is complete. Uh, and if you did want to register an account, you can go in there and offer it kind of like a like a Wikipedia page. You can go in and make an edit and you'll get credit for the edit and so forth. So not every book has that. But in this case, it's just this first uh, book revival, not uh, a cover I'm seeking out in particular. So we'll skip that one. I'm not going to go over each book. I'm just going to scroll through and give you an idea. Uh, so right off the bat, this information is valuable in a number of ways. Obviously, we're looking for books that are done by a creator, but what kind of books are we looking for? What, what comics would be interesting? So the first thing is visually, as I scroll through, I'm looking for covers that pop. I'm looking for great colors the figure work or maybe covers where you can quickly identify that that's a Jenny Frizen cover. The other thing though is because this is sorted by publication date, you can actually find, you know, something like this Angel 2009, uh, the 2009 series issue 28 cover, according to this list that this is her first cover. This is her, her, the first, her first published cover, comic book cover art. Now I'd have to double check that information just to make sure that it is, but it at least gives you a general idea. If it's not, it's one of her earlier works. And a lot of times if you are dealing with collectors of artists or other creators, they might want to invest in their first published work or their early works as opposed to their more recent work. Now Frizen, I think, is an interesting case. I think she ended up picking up steam and getting popular and i think that her covers have improved quite a bit and you could say that uh, for a lot of different creators but i think she kind of for me like she keeps getting better and better there are other artists where maybe they came out with some really interesting covers at first became very popular and then maybe the market became saturated with their work so the earlier works are the ones that everybody's focused on collecting and not so much the ones today Frizen to me is always, almost all the time, just hitting it out of the park with her covers. But still, this is one of the ways that I feel like I can pull value out of this information is to look at the earlier work. So you can scroll through here and see she did a lot of covers for IDW. And again, you may say, I'm not really interested in, in any of the IDW or Dark Horse published, but here we go with DC. Uh, this is pretty cool, this House of Night, uh, number five. I like that cover. And you'd want to pick books with places where, you know, her signature would pop to. It's like on this one, you could see maybe across the shoulder right here on the side. Or even, uh, I've seen her do like diagonal signatures or even vertical sigs, something like this off to the side as well. Uh, not something where you'd want to go like right across the neck or something like that. But uh, like this one too, Revival number one, uh, a lot of good space for signatures. But I love this particular resource because you can see the, the covers. Uh, here's Ghost number zero. This is a great cover. And you can start to see over time, now we're getting into 2012, uh, still a lot of image, DC, Dark Horse. But you can start to almost see over time, linearly, her art, I think, get better, but also more her style, which is more like central single figure work. So you can see this here in Revival 11, the kind of the direction that she's going. And then we get into Dynamite. She had a, a very nice and memorable run on Red Sonia. So a lot of great Red Sonia covers from her, the, the 2013 series. 
The Witching Hour reboot from 2013. This is her cover for issue number one. Uh, a lot of great covers still on Revival. More Red Sonja covers. And then we've got Loki, Agent of Asgard from Marvel. Issue number one where she did the cover where maybe you kind of look at this very quickly and it doesn't really pop as a Frizen cover. So this is kind of where you have to make the decision. Is this a book if I find it for cover price? Is it worth sending in for the submission? Because is this one of her more well-known comics? But also, does that matter? If it has her signature, people might see that and go, I didn't realize she did the cover of Loki, uh, Agent of Asgard number one. And there may be some renewed interest in the book. Another Loki cover, more revival, another great ghost cover, uh, Red Sonia again. And so you can start to see that you have quite a few options. Uh, this one looks fantastic. I love this uh, ghost number seven. Very cool with like a digital overlay on top of that book. Loki, Red Sonia again, more Red Sonia. This also re reminded me of John Romita Jr., this issue of Bodies, uh, Bodies number four. I thought that was a great cover. And then, like I said, you can start to see her singular figure really come together here as we move into 2015 covers. More great covers for Clean Room. This one's cool, Clean Room number four of Vampirella, the fried pie exclusive. Can you imagine like her signing this in like a silver ink uh, would really, really pop on this book. And yeah, you can keep scrolling and checking out all of these great covers done by the artist that you're searching for to give yourself some more options as far as uh, which books that you'd want to send in for a, a signature series. And you don't always have to use this just to send in books to CGC. I think if you're a fan of certain artists, uh, you want to see if there are some books that you may not be aware of that they were responsible for a cover. And if you're not aware of it, chances are others aren't either. And you can probably find some great deals online. So I'll typically search by a cover artist, I'll find a book, be super impressed or drawn to it, and I'll get on Mile High Comics, My Comic Shop, Midtown, eBay, and start searching around and we'll find the book pretty readily available at an affordable price. So there you go. This is the Grand Comics database. Once again, you can find it at comics.org. Let me know what you think about this resource. Let me know if you have a different resource that you prefer that you find is maybe a little bit easier to use. But I love this sort of canned report that uh, comes with Grand Comics Database to find great covers from your favorite artists. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.